Howdy folks, uh, Troy with VTunes with the V8s, I'm back. I got my tins here, they're all cleared, they're dried. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and sand them out with uh, some 600 in water. I took, uh, got a nice clean bucket with some clean water, I took my 600 grip paper, I put it in the bucket to soak, that way there are any spikes in the paper, uh, it softens the paper up and if there's, you know, spikes which are a little um, abrasive materials that are adhered to the paper, sometimes it's, it's not even, you get a little spike, this softens up the paper, that stuff falls off so you don't get any real scratching that you don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand these all out nice and flat and then at that point they'll be ready to, um, to tape out and put whatever graphic we decide. Um, I'm still really undecided but I just want to come on and show you this. Um, I showed you a shot of what, we, what I had before, I just want to touch base with you on this. So I'm going to get these sanded out then I'll come back on the camera and we'll start taping out some designs. Howdy folks, this is Troy with V-Twins to V-8s and I'm moving into the next segment on my Paint Your Motorcycle series. Uh, this is where we actually come up with a design to put on the, uh, on the tank and fenders that we did in black in the previous segment. So after thinking about it left, right, and which way, I've, I've done flames, I've done fades, I've done metal flake, fish scales, all that stuff. Uh, one of the things that I haven't done with you on camera here is a... Um, is an old school what they call scallop paint job. Basically it looks like these points. So what I did was I, I took my fenders, I sanded them with 600 wet and dry, got them all cleaned up, and then I went and I laid out this design. Basically what it is, once you see it, you'll be very familiar with it. It looks like you've got your base color and then your secondary color looks like not, you know, like flames extend like fingers, uh, scallops extend like points. So you don't have all the um, intricate flowing and everything uh, that you would have with a, with a flame job. It's more or less just straight points. You, you can tape them and angle them any way you want. Um, so I've got this set of sports through tins and I've laid out my scallops and I've actually uh, put the fine line down and I've also put uh, some masking tape down so you can actually see what I have. So everything that's underneath this masking tape is the black base coat that I already laid down. Everything that you can see right now is going to be my secondary color, which in this particular case is going to be red. So I'm going to have red and then I'm going to have black and then what we'll probably do afterwards is we'll put an accent stripe along the edge of that. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see when we peel it off and say yes or no. So I taped it off so that you can see it. I'm going to come over, I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to show you my other pieces that I just laid the tape out. So here is my fender, and it's probably hard to see, but my fender is all black. And then I took my fine line, and on this particular fender, you can see this is going to be my area of paint, and then this is my point for my um, for my scallop. It goes here, it goes here, and like that. So these this area inside of here is going to be where my red is. Okay. So then we'll come over here, and I'll show you my back fender. Now my back fender is a little bit different because the back fender what you have is you um, you have the tail light you have the license plate bracket and then you've got either a big seat or a solo seat this this bolt right here is for your is for your big seat and then this um, this bolt here is for your solo seat so most of the guys especially with the sports they like to run a solo seat and then maybe a pad so what I wanted to do is I wanted you to really be able to see the scallops but I didn't want to hide it with the seat folks I'm back with my fender so you're familiar with the Sportster fender this is where the tail light goes this is where the license plate bracket goes this is where the back of your back seat or, a, or your back bolt if you're running a two up seat goes this right here is where your, um, your solo seat goes. So if you look at it like this, you can see this is the solo, this is the back, this is the license plate bracket. I'm going to hold it up like this, and you can see the points that I've got right here. These are going to be your scallops. This is what I have on the side. Now there's a strut that goes right across here, so you're not really going to see this part here, but you're going to have this point that I have here that I arced it so it follows the arc of the fender. I thought it would look pretty cool like that. So, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to get this fender and the front fender taped off like I did with the tank here, and then we'll get ready to apply the, um, the secondary color, which is red. Okay, folks, so I'm back here on the project. What I've done now is I've gone ahead, I've taped out both of my fenders. Um, 
in the pattern that we talked about earlier. So where I had my fine line, I went on the outside of it and I laid down this three quarter inch masking tape. I put a little paper on the back side of it. So now what you see here is everything that you see that's black is going to be red. Everything underneath here is going to remain black. So I get this all set. Here's my rear fender, and you can get kind of an idea at this point is the whole back of it is going to be black, the whole front of it's going to be red. So I got this all taped out, but I wanted to take a little time and show you how I laid this out and how um, I came up with this design so that when it comes time, if you want to pursue this and do this on your own, you know exactly what it is that I have going on. So one of the things I did was to get some symmetry in this tank. I, um, I, need, I found the center line first, so what I did was I just ran a, a thin piece of uh, 1 8 fine line or 16 fine line right down the middle through the center of the gas cap and then I've got a line right down the center of the, center of the tank. Okay. Once I have that, I took a grease pencil, so like a little crayon, and I made some marks on my tank and then I took my tape off. That gave me my center line down the middle of the tank. Once I had that done, then I figured out where I wanted my point to be. So what I want to do is I want to start out in the center of the tank, make my first point coming off of there, and then make symmetry with each uh, subsequent point or scallop, if you want, down both sides. So I start in the very center, make my center one, make my right one, make my left one, right, left, right, left, until I lose it down here on the bottom of the tank. So I'm going to grab the camera and I'll show you um, what's going on here. So I'm going to put my, my fine line back down the middle of this tank again, just for illustration purposes, so to speak, so that you can see it. And then you can see what I have here. So here is my center line that I made and then you could see where my scallop is. So once I did that, I took a machinist rule and I measured from the center out to the edge. So when I pulled my stripe, I got to exactly where I wanted to be, which is an inch and a half in this particular thing. So when I get over here, I got an inch and a half or so over here. And I did that there, and then I got over here, and I measured this on, for, for this particular scallop. I did, I did this side, and then I made my bend. I did the same thing inside of here and inside of there. I don't really have to worry about my, my points coming down because that's my taper. So once I start at one particular width at the top, I just taper that back and then start here, this width and this width are similar, this width is similar to that, this spacing here is similar to this on either side. It's not the same per se per each one of these, but it's the same in relationship to each one, okay? And if you go over to the other side, I have the same thing going on here. This way here, I mean, when I say I measure it with this machinist rule, I don't mean I'm measuring it like some kind of finished carpenter and I'm down to the 16th or anything like that. I mean, I measure it, I pick my whatever my width's gonna be. It's gonna be an inch, it's gonna be an inch and a half, an inch and three quarters, whatever I think looks good. And then I'm gonna be close to that. Give or take an eighth of an inch or something, nobody's ever gonna see that when it's painted. Not only that, I'm probably gonna stripe this edge with some hand striping, which is never really perfectly straight anyways. So what happens is, is I just need it to be close enough so that when this is on a bike, there's so much going on with the bike, all the chrome, the bike, you got three or four different colors. This is here, the fender's there, the other fender's there. Your eye's going all over the place. Nobody's gonna be like, oh wow, this scallop is you know a quarter of an inch um, narrower than that one. Nobody's ever really gonna do that it, because you're not really ever really gonna be able to see it. But as you're setting it up, you wanna make sure that you um, that you're you're aware of what you're doing so you don't end up with something that's really wacky because if you make it so it's like you know way off one way or another you're actually going to see that but the important part is to set your center and then work to each side so i mean a tank is pretty easy you're going to get two right down the middle and then you're going to work off to the side depending upon how wide the tank is so i just wanted to take a little time and show you how i laid it out so i get my center i make my point then I make my radius. My radius has got to be close, but not perfect. 
the width of my radius I measure, then I come back down. And then I do that on both sides, and then I do my next one on one side. Once I get my next one on the other side, I go back to the, the, the previous side and finish that one. And then this way, and then that way, that gives me that symmetry. So I'm looking at it and I'm doing it and I'm bending it and I'm measuring it and I got it and like, like yep, that looks right. Now I go over the other side and make the same thing on the other side. Um, like I said, not perfect, but close. Close enough so when somebody looks at the bike here, looks good, looks at the bike there, looks the same. So I just want to spend a little time just showing you how I laid it out. Same thing with the fender. Start in the center, work your way out. All right, so now I'm going to get the shop ready and we're going to put some, uh, we're going to put some red on this. All right, folks, so I'm back. So what I've done is I've laid down my red base coat, and now we're going to peel it back and see what we have. So this is really my favorite part of the job, when you've done all the upfront work, and now you get to really see it pan out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on peeling this back so that you guys can see what we've got under here. You want to peel it back nice and slow so you don't peel off anything that you want. Hopefully we didn't have any, any bleed throughs under our tape or anything that we got to deal with, but if in that case I'll, I'll show you uh, what we can do to square that stuff away. Alright, looks like we're doing pretty good. Okay, so I'm back here, I'm continuing. Now I don't know if you remembered how I set up this tank. Uh, if I did show you in this video, but what I do is I put it on a 2x4 like this so it straddles that and then I put a couple of screws up here and uh, then I just let it sit on a couple of screws back here. This way here I don't really have anything touching the tank and then I can take the tank and I can do this with it when I mask off the bottom of it. So right now what I have is I have the bottom of this tank masked off so I didn't get any red in there. And when I do put my clear on, I'm going to probably want to blow some more clear on the bottom of this. So what I'm going to do is just take all of this off. Plus, I got all kinds of tails from my fine line tape every which way around here. So we'll start um, right here. And I'll peel my fine line tape off. And I just want to roll it back like this. And then this way here, it kind of peels my edge off. And I should with a little bit of luck, maybe some skill, I should have a nice clean edge, which it does look like I do there. And then I'm just going to continue to peel all these off, and then you'll, you'll see what we have. And I think, I think this is going to look really good. Um, see if I've got some. You just got to kind of work at it. This is one of those things where um, it's best if you take your time and really pay attention to what you're doing because you know you got a lot of work invested in this and you don't want to damage anything that you've already done. Like notice that I have some glue that has kind of stayed with me here. I want to make sure I clean that off. But it looks like my edges are pretty darn good and that's really the important part. There we go. So you're starting to get an idea of what I got going on here. Uh, I have a couple little spots of some glue and stuff. I'll have to clean that off. But I'm just going to continue. And I'm going to peel my tape off of all of my pieces. And then once I get that done, I'm going to look everything over really good. Make sure I have all of my glue and everything off of here. And then we're, uh, we'll be ready to lay some clear on this. It's got a very uh, like old hot rod look. You notice that I made my tails over here long and my center tail I made short. On the other pieces, on the fenders, I made my center long and my, um, my sides short. It's just a little, kind of a little design thing that I did for it so it would, uh, so it just look a little different. But you can see it does have a, a certain level of symmetry, like you look at this side and then you come around here, it's all red. You come around here and it looks like this on this side. And when you look at it from the back side, all the points come together, kind of nice. Um, I'm gonna get everything else all stripped off and we'll get ready to prep this up and clear coat it. Okay, folks, I'm back. 
Here's my tank. I took my 1200, I touched up all my little edges, anything that I missed on my fenders, and I kind of like went over some edges on this tank just to kind of clean up the edge, the border between the red and the black. I'm going to probably stripe this out in, a, in an accent color. I'm really not sure which one yet, but um, I do like to have it be clean just in case I put the clear to it and I look at it. I have the option of saying, okay, I'm done. Um, if I leave ragged edges or a little bleed through or something and I decide I don't want to chase after it, then it just creates a whole lot of work or it forces me to stripe it. Okay, so here I am. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wash this with a water-based pre-cleaner. Um, I've got my base coat is black with clear on it. My red has no clear on it, so I don't want anything solvent based on there. My focus isn't really going to be the red. It's going to be the black to clean that because I have my um, adhesive tape on all those areas. So what I'll do is I'll put some water-based pre-cleaner on a rag and I'll wipe these areas. I'll stay away from my red as much as possible, but it's water-based so it won't hurt my red. I'll do all my pieces like that. I'll get my clear ready and then I'll just have to take a tack rag. I'll tack this whole thing off along with my other pieces and I'll put two or three coats of clear on it and we'll be done. Howdy folks, Troy with V-Twins to V-8s. I'm back. My uh, paint job project here with you, the scallop paint job is completed. I figured I'd come back on show you the end result now that it's dry enough so that I can touch it. Um, obviously you can see it in the picture. My two fenders over here at the other end of the bench. I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to pan around and show you what it looks like. I think it looks really good. So there you go. So you can see how nice and crisp all our lines came out here. And that's really what it's all about. So you know like I showed you a spot, a couple of spots where it had bled through. I sanded those out. Okay, so there's your tank. I'm going to come over here and show you this back fender. If you remember, on our fender we had a couple of spots. I can't even remember where they were that bled through. I sanded those out. So everything along here looks really good. This looks nice. This is a view down over the top like that. That's the view from the back. Um, here's our front fender. See how nice and smooth it looks without those rivets on there. There's the, there's the front, there's your design. So, I mean, uh, that's pretty much it. So in conclusion, um, basically all I'm really going to do to this is, is I'll probably give it a very, very light sanding with some water and some 1500 grit paper. I'll polish this all out and that'll take care of my little bit of edge that I have between my transition here. If I wanted to, if it was a real show quality paint job, you know, that I was going for, I could sand this whole thing with 600, apply another two to three coats of clear, then sand it and polish it out. But I'm not that far into this. I mean, it, you know, once again, it's for a relatively inexpensive bike, so you got to kind of look at, you know, what you're going to, how much you're going to get paid to do it versus what you uh, have invested in doing it. So at this point, we're all set, a little sanding and polishing, and it's all done. Uh, really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, you can check me out on, um, on YouTube, Facebook, vtwins 8scom our website, vtwins 8scom And uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on there. I usually try and get back to anybody who has any questions. I can walk you through problems that you may have. Um, Pretty much anything. So uh, stay tuned, and I appreciate you um, appreciate watching my video. Thank you.